everyone hear me? Or do I have the mic? We're okay? All right. So, thank you for joining me this evening. Uh, thank you, Michael, Max, and SG Novit, as well as Engineers SG, for inviting me. It's my first time here at Junior Dev SG. Very honored. Thank you for having me. Um, so, a bit about myself, I lead the data science team at Allianz and my other role, I also lead the Singapore chapter for Girls in Tech. Um, I'm happy to see a couple of Girls in Tech, but we need to encourage more <laughs> to come. So, yeah, so the next time we have a junior dev meetup, we'll share it with <laughs> Girls in Tech more. Yeah, so I'm going to switch channel a bit and go a bit into insurance. Um, so the technical aspects of here, it's, it's not, I'm not going to go into code and stuff too. It's more to give you a better idea of what we do in data science, in insurance specifically. Can I get a show of hands? Who here has an insurance? Do you know what your insurance covers you? <laughs> roughly, roughly. <laughs> Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. So insurance is a very not well understood thing because of all the complexities and also inefficiencies that comes with the different kinds of jargons and things like that. And so um, it's also why it got me into insurance. Um, what got me really attracted is the idea that hey, maybe I can help to break this down to digitalize this, to make things more efficient and to drive this through data science. So the reason why there are so many different players trying to come into insurance is because the global insurance industry actually represents $400 trillion in premium value. And this is Allianz. We are 126 years old this year and our last year revenue was about 135 billion euros. We are the one of the biggest financial institutes around. We have businesses across private insurance, business insurance, um, all kinds of insurance. We have, it's also many, many different startups who are trying to get into this space and disrupt the value chain. So every day I will see many, many startups uh, coming to me and say, you know, I, can, I have this solution that I can help augment what you have. And very soon there, there are big startups um, that are trying to take over the entire value chain as well. And so incumbent companies like Allianz is doing quite a bit into digitalization and also into data science to try and catch up and maintain our lead in here. So the data science team has been around for three years now. What we have done is to create um, what we call smart solution suite. We have created different uh, data science products that we can deploy across the region. So Allianz Singapore, it's the headquarter for Asia Pacific. We have offices in Malaysia, Thailand, Taiwan, and all these countries around the region. So it goes from smart deploy. So it, it actually covers both life insurance as well as general insurance. So general insurance are things like your motor insurance, your property insurance, um, and things like that. So we have actually standardized things to, to make it easy to deploy. Um, so we put in data templates, we have model templates and output templates. And I'm sure for people who have been exposed to data science, it's not that straightforward for a lot of these models over here. And so what we really want to do is to simplify the process of this um, and move towards being able to serve some of these risk scores through APIs. And that's what we are building, multiple different data science products to be able to be plugged uh, as part of the insurance value chain. So yeah, so if I can go a bit more in depth into the different products that we have, we actually um, built our data science products based on the insurance uh, customer journey. So if you look at this chart over here, it's actually a very simplified view of a person coming into an insurance company. So when you first buy an insurance, um, that's where you start. And then if you continue having good relationship with the insurance company, then you'll get happier and happier and that's where you, you grow your value. But if something bad happens, uh, that's where the, the satisfaction actually drops and then you actually fall off. So maybe I'll take some time here to share a story. So I would, I've asked a lot of my friends and before I joined the insurance industry also that, you know, what do you think of an insurance company? And they would say that uh, usually insurance company will not want me to claim 
So they do all kinds of things to stop me from claiming. But <laughs> I see someone nodding like really, really <laughs> seriously here. Um, so yeah, the first time I actually sat on the board meeting for uh, Malaysia General Insurance Alliance. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's for the general insurance, so like the motor insurance side. And they were discussing how can we make our customers um, claim more. Because they are very, very certain that with their claims process, um, once the person claim, they would become a promoter for them. So you would be so sold and know that wow, Alliance is a good brand because if I'm in trouble, Alliance will be there for me. So I think it's a, it's a different kind of mindset that we are trying to bring into now. Um, yeah. So we first have a smart agent um, product suite to help our agents um, become smarter in dealing with customers. So I think now, even though we are moving to digitalization, um, how many of you would actually buy your life insurance online? You would? Great. Yeah, so I think there is still a long way to go. Hopefully, we'll get there. Um, so a lot of our insurance is still being sold by agents. And that's why we have different uh, products from recruitment. How do we identify potential suitable agents? to um, identifying agents with high potential and also how do we identify that agents are going to leave us? So what kind of traits are they going to show to, to show that they are actually going to leave us so that we can bring in another agent to take over him before he actually leaves the customer. And then there's also one part on smart pricing. Um, another story to share, um, Alliance Malaysia has actually recently uh, pushed out a 3 h product it's for high diabetes, high blood pressure, and high, high, I can't remember what's the last high. So anyways, anyways the hypertension, yeah. So, <laughs> very good. So, yeah. Um, yeah, most of the time, if you have any of these three highs, you'll be turned away by insurance company. And now there is this product out there that allows you to be protected even when you have this one of these three highs. And that is being done because of smart pricing. You are able to break down individuals by their risk and you don't pay for the unnecessary risk that you don't carry. And that's how you balance off. And then we have the usual, which is um, when is the best time to contact the customers? When is the best product to sell? Um, I would like to highlight Smart Health. Smart <coughs> Health, it's what we are doing to pr um, predict chronic diseases early. So there are signs of you um, claiming on particular diseases that may lead to a, a particular chronic disease in, let's say, one or two years. And that's something that we don't want to see our customers have because it is a lose-lose situation if that happens, right? If this customer goes on to get chronic diseases without getting warned that he's going to go there, then we're going to pay out more and this customer is not going it's to, it's, it's going to be in bad health. So early detection of chronic diseases is something that we are working very hard on. And then the last part is um, more on operations. So Smart Deploy is putting our claims assessors at the best location so that they are able to reach um, car accidents at the fastest time. And then the last one is on Smart Catch, which is detecting abnormal health claims, detecting abnormal policy submissions, and also motor claims. Okay, so I'm going to go deeper into three case studies. Um, so Smart Catch Risk uh, is on predictive underwriting. So what happens is that in, while we are trying to improve our customer experience, so we are trying to let more customers get their policies faster, we also need to man manage the risk that the company is taking. So how we do that is through a straight through processing um, engine by detecting, by putting in variables of customers at policy submission we are able to detect which customer is likely to not tell us that he has a disease. So what happens is um, the underwriting team found that um, there is this group of customers who are likely to not disclose the conditions that they have currently. Like for example, if you have a chronic disease, 
maybe one year before you would have a bit of symptoms on something is happening to you. But when you actually apply for an insurance policy, you may not really declare that these are the conditions that you have. And uh, these are the unnecessary risks that we want to stop. And that's how we actually built this model. Um, and I think one of the stories to share for anyone who maybe wants to become a data scientist is that um, we actually built uh, like a neural network model and we fine tune all the parameters and stuff like that. But we went back to the business people, the underwriters who have got like 20 years of experience and they say no. Um, how, why do you think that this person has high risk? Not, none of what he's saying is it's high risk to me. So then we said, ah, it's neural network, it works like a brain, right? So I, I can't really tell you how it happens. Um, so then that's the part where we have to ma uh, manage business side of things to what the technical capabilities, uh, what the technologies allow us to do. So we went back and we redid the model and we did a decision tree. We, we did exposed actually. So it's still not like we can grab out a, a, a particular branch and say because it's it's weighted across right um, but it actually is easier to visualize that this is what's happening and so eventually we went with this and we got into deployment um, and actually increased the straight through rate from 55 percent to 75 percent um, and and we did random sampling as well and we uh, measured all the different performances Sorry? Ah, UBB, it's the, uh, it's, it's the underwriter's rules. So uh, it's called underwriting black box. It's a, it's a set of rules that underwriters have used for many, many, many years. So the rules can be things like uh, if you have BMI of more than 35, then you are like high risk. So it's like a fixed set of things that they think are correct. So the UBB rules are things that we are trying to get rid of so in the ideal case we can just ignore the UBB error and just go straight into the data science model and so that, that this layer over here will be gone but yeah yeah that's that's the that's the reality of things where the business side of the business side is still um, very insistent that I cannot just let the floodgate loose, right? I need to have some of my rules in place still to be able to safeguard some of the risk. The underwriters. So, yeah, they have like many, many years of experience and um, probably like logistics, logistic regression or something like that, like to, to project forward, but it's not like a machine learning kinds of model that allows you to find pockets of patterns. Yeah. Okay, so um, the next one is on health claims and normally detection. So this one we did unsupervised learning. Uh, there was to, to actually say that a claim, health claim is abnormal. It's actually not easy, especially for insurance company. It's very hard to prove that someone is trying to fraud a claim, right? And it's bad publicity and it's not good on an insurance company. And so there are no true labels that we have. So we did uh, um, unsupervised learning for this. Um, I guess the, the main story around this, it's really that uh, we, it's, it's about coming up with a different way to do what they, the things that it's running currently. So what the usual process that they are doing is that for every claim that come in, they would go through every claim and see that, okay, if this person is claiming 100% more than what the other people of this same condition is claiming, then it must be a fraud. But we all know that people wants, who wants to fraud will not go to 100%, right? Maybe I will, go, I will charge like 5% more. But I'll charge like 100, 100 times 5% more. So how do you catch these kind of patterns um, and try and prove them in an unsupervised way? Uh, it's something that we, we have worked with the team on. So, uh, yeah. Maybe I can show you how the dashboard looks like. Two minutes. Two minutes. <laughs> okay. 
can. So we just build a, a tableau dashboard. So this is actually the agent um, agent code, and then this is a tracker of the performance of the agent. So every month we will actually run the run a report, uh, run uh, the model once, and then score each agent by their abnormality compared to the rest of the agent. So one is the most abnormal agent, and then this this dashboard can actually help claims assessors take a look at which agent is actually performing worse or which agent after they actually got scolded they are starting to show better behavior right <laughs> so it's a lot of education also um yeah and then these are the agent details this is the the different kinds of factors that we put into the model to be able to detect that norm normality and then you can actually drill into the actual cases for this Correct. When they claim for it, so when they claim for it, it has to come through the system for us to process the claim. Yeah. Okay. Then I think my time is up. <laughs> That's all I have.